we need to do a complete betta fish tank makeover today guys there's a lot going on we're in the process of moving and I'm taking apart tanks things like that but I need to still do things I still need to set up new tanks because well I haven't done it in a super long time our betta fish tank up here is so far gone I really don't even want to show it to you it's it, frankly it's embarrassing just because the tank doesn't look very nice doesn't mean that it's a negative environment for the fish. Our fish is happy and healthy and doing just fine. Maybe he's not as happy as he could be because the tank looks so bad, but that's what we're gonna fix today. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is get our fish out of here because we're gonna be doing way too much work. So I just scoop them up in this little cup. You try to not use the net just because betta fish can be a little extra sensitive to that. We wanna keep them surrounded by water the entire time. Now I'm going to grab a net and try and save as much of this floating sylvania as possible. This is one of the main reasons why our tank has been able to be so safe for so long without a filter. We'll talk about that in a second. I uh, clearly need two hands here. I need to clean the substrate, so I'm just going to pump in a bunch of hose water, kick everything up, and then eventually siphon it out. This is going to help to clean the substrate because I'm going to be kind of reusing it later in the video. Not something that we had to do in this particular circumstance, but it's what I decided to do. You can just see me draining it here, trying to get all of that junk out of there, and this is just one way to do it. Of course, I could have taken the substrate out and into a bucket and done this, but again, this is just how I wanted to do it this time. Now that that's done, I'm gonna remove the tank because we just don't have enough elbow room to get in and really rescape this thing. So we're just gonna carefully pick it up and move it over to the other side of the room. Now here I'm just doing even more of that brute force substrate cleaning method. I'm just going to repeat the cleaning step one more time here. You have to scrape the glass because it is super dirty. There's a bunch of duckweed that's stuck on here as well as hard water stains. So we bust out the old handy razor blade and start doing some work on it. The tank is pretty clean at this point, uh, but we do need to remove things finally. So we're going to take out the big spiderwood piece, all of the rocks, and we'll eventually drain this thing one more time here in a second. And here I'm actually going to start to remove a little bit more of the substrate. This is going to help to clean it out even better, but then also I don't want the exact amount that was in here to start with. Once it's drained down, I can then see some more areas where there's just a bunch of gunk that's stuck on the glass. So one more opportunity to really get that stuff off there and get the tank clean. Now it's time to add in some sand. We're going with the classic Monterey beach sand, one of my favorites, a little bit lighter, brighter color for our tank here, our new scape. And in hindsight, I probably should have removed the fluval stratum. I also should have washed this, done a little pre-wash on it beforehand, but, but hey, sometimes we still make mistakes, guys. We're gonna rectify this later in the video. Now let's start to play around with our aquascape. I want to reuse most of what I have here. So the main piece of spiderwood is going back in the tank. It's already seasoned. It's not going to mold up. So we want to use that. I then put in some rocks and we're all good to go. Now it's time to move the tank back to where it originally lived and we'll kind of finish the scaping out as we go here. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with the tank or else I would have done it all before having that limited elbow room. Now it's time to fill up the tank and we're doing so just kind of slowly. We, again, we want to kick things up because we didn't pre-wash the gravel because we forgot, but uh, I'm just going to spend some time here spraying in some hose water. You can see that it's a little cloudy. Now I'm going to suck some of that starting water out to try and remove some of the cloudiness. Uh, we're going to do this a couple more times. time to plant the tank so we're grabbing some rotala from one of the tanks behind us we're gonna put this in the back of the aquarium because it's a good spot for it just trying to reach the back of the tank it's tough we don't have a lot of elbow clearance I also want to grab some java fern this is some leftover stuff from my buddy will over at Northwest Aqua Hobby he sells the best java fern in the industry small business guy grows it out all himself it's beautiful stuff we showed it off in the last video uh, but we had some extra so I want to make use of it in today's beta tank video because betta fish love having a lot of plants and java ferns perfect for this time to tank now that we got plants in and most of the water, we need to remember to dechlorinate. So we're going to be using our Fritz Guard to get rid of that chlorine. 
And of course, we want to add in some Turbo Star, because while this isn't technically a new aquarium, there is some existing stuff in there, we want to make sure that it's safe. So we're going to throw in some Turbo Star that's going to help get our bacterial cycle going, and everything is going to be good for our beta. And don't forget, we got to add in that Sylvania. I actually uh, left a bunch of it in the net overnight and it dried out, so we only have a little bit left that was in the jar with him. Uh, but this stuff will grow quick and it'll do its job here pretty quickly, if not immediately. Floating plants are a fantastic way to reduce ammonia and keep the nitrates down. And that's what we love about them. With that, we're gonna drop the water level down a little bit just in case our fish decides to jump. This should prevent him from making it to the floor and we're gonna grab him with a cup here slowly bring him up out of here slowly emphasis on slowly and then put him in his new aquascape tank my camera woman was a little shaky there huh Let's be nice to her though, she she did a good job. But I'm back guys, it is two days later. Let me fix this glare real quick. I think that helped a little bit. You're still gonna see my shirt through the reflect. Oh, we got, no, we can, we can get that one. There we go, that is much better. So like I said, two days in the future and the tank is doing good. I mean, I, you're not gonna have problems in a two day time period, but you will have problems show up within the first week. Our fish is doing pretty good. I think he likes his home a lot better than what it looked before. I like I did I could not show you what this thing looked like before we did this rescape, guys, but trust me, our fish is a lot happier now. I did end up putting in one fresh piece of spider wood. That's this front one. The original piece is just now hanging out in the back. And you can see already just two days in, we're starting to mold up a little bit. That's something that you're going to experience pretty much no matter what when you get wood that hasn't been waterlogged before. And it is trying to float up. It's just kind of positioned in a way with enough pressure from these rocks that it's not moving yet. I think we're gonna be okay. Our fish is really appreciating all of this extra java fern in here. Just that many more places to hide and to feel more like he's in a natural environment. So that makes me happy. That's That was the whole goal of this and I think we achieved the perfect bed of fish tank makeover today. I did just do a water change on this aquarium, dropped it down probably close to 50%, and that was just because we started to get a little bit of the stagnant water blues, so there was a little bit of a film developing, and there's just, I mean, there's stuff coming off of this fresh wood too, right? So I don't think you can see it because I cleaned it up for this shot, but there's a little bit of that uh, kind of brown, bubbly, foamy stuff in the corner, and that's just, that's a natural thing that you're gonna have when you put in fresh spider wood. We just need to make sure that we stay on top of it, and when we see those kind of things starting to develop, we're quick to a water change. If we don't, if we let it sit for a week, then we're gonna come back to a tank that has a massive film and probably some algae issues, et cetera, et cetera. We wanna try and avoid that. So even sometimes if you do just a little tweak, it can be enough to kind of reset your aquarium in a way. And so just pay attention to your tanks, guys, and act upon them when you see things pop up and you'll do a lot better than if you ignore them. Trust me, I've done that a lot lately. If you attempt to do a no filter betta fish tank, I really recommend you guys go with the Sylvania like we used in this video. Um, you know, duckweed is also great. Use duckweed in a lot of tanks, but you know, duckweed has that kind of stigma and an annoyance to it that the Sylvania doesn't. Sylvania is a really good alternative to duckweed because it's easy to clean out. You know, you don't get the little tiny pieces that of course I left on my hand from the tank over there and then just got into this tank. That should make the blooper real. But it's just awesome stuff. You can get rid of it easily if you want to and it does all of the same things that duckweed does. Probably even better. I'm not gonna go ahead and confirm that because I don't know, but it certainly has allowed our betta to be in perfect health, not had any issues with nitrogen and probably heavy metals too for the entire you know year, year and a few months that he's been in this tank. And hey, I get it, you know, the no filter thing isn't for everybody. Really recommend these little Azus or even the Dymax filters that Boost Plant has. I'll put a link for all this stuff in the description, guys, for you to check out and to go through. These things are inexpensive. They do the job and they're perfect for smaller aquariums. These are all six gallon water boxes and they do perfect. 
So yeah, guys, that's probably gonna do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and taking part in the makeover of this tank. I think it turned out pretty good. Let me know down in the comments below, and don't forget to check out the sticker store, as well as legitfishfood.com if you need to feed your fish some better food. We got you. Hopefully I can do something here, maybe at the new house, uh, but I hope I see you before then. See you guys.